Hi, it's DeWire, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is Sunday, May 9th, 2021, the day after Canelo's victory over Billy Joe Saunders. Let's talk about the fight, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, first to the gamblers. I know the world right now is going to say, huh, you thought Billy Joe Saunders was going to win the fight. That's all good. But understand, the lines before the fight were so out of whack that we hit on the hedge, which was a, depending on when you got the bet, a plus 135 or a plus 130 on the under 10 and a half rounds. We hit on the hedge and made money on the fight. Understand how you structure the bet is everything. The Billy Joe Saunders part of the fight lost, I wish I got four to one or five to one, depending on what you got um, with a Saunders victory. But I take consolation, I take solace in the fact that I did hit on a plus 135. Now let's talk about the fight chaos cause amnesia right after the fight everyone is you know upbeat they know who the winner is uh the winner in the ring after the fight says no i didn't think i was losing any rounds what i want you to do is to go back and look in the moment on the zone telecast right in the moment as the fight is going forward this is rare in a Canelo fight. Chris Mannix, forget the official judges' scorecards. They were ridiculous. They were ridiculous. Chris Mannix, live, as the telecast was unfolding, going into the last round, Chris Mannix had Billy Joe Saunders winning the fight as did I. Now Saunders started the fight a little bit slower than I wanted. But I thought at the end of four rounds this fight was even. What I want people to do, the first round is a contentious round. Right? I want people to go back and look at that first round I know some pundits, Carl Frotch, on the telecast, gave that first round to Canelo. I didn't. I, I don't know how you could, quite frankly. I'm with Chris Mannix. I thought Saunders is pumping a jab, which is what he should have done during the fight more. I thought he's pumping a jab. I thought he quite frankly, was the more authoritative in the first round. I thought Canelo was tentative, so much so. Then when we get into the second round, there is a discussion on the live broadcast about how Canelo likes to start slow. Right? I thought Billy Joe Saunders won the first round. I had the fight 2-2, two -two, going into round number 5. And then, and I know people are going to disagree with me, but I thought that Billy Joe Saunders takes over the fight. Right now, let me point out that on the telecast, they have Roy Jones. Right now, I'm just telling you, Chris Mannix and Roy Jones both had a turn in the fight with Billy Joe Saunders starting to assert himself in rounds five, six, and seven. Well, let me just say, um, Saunders makes some mistakes. Let's focus on the styles right now. Let's focus on the mistakes. Uh, Saul Alvarez and his trainer, Eddie Reynoso, had an interesting game plan. I believe that Saunders just allowed them to do that game plan. This fight could have been different. Let me just say, live, 
on the telecast before they enter the ring. You see Reynoso working out Canelo in the locker room. And you notice that Canelo is practicing moves where he chases after Reynoso. I believe Canelo was expecting Saunders to move like Ray Leonard did against Roberto Duran. Right? Check out my pre-fight video where we talk about that. Check out my favorites folder on YouTube where we have the film of Ray Leonard against Roberto Duran. So I think Canelo was expecting to have to go find Billy Joe Saunders. I believe he and his team were prepared to have Canelo break stride and literally run up to Saunders to try to cut off the ring. Now, in one of the most mind-blowing decisions I've come across, because I thought, and I still think, this fight was there on the table for Saunders. Let me also point out, too, that there is a slick southpaw in the crowd at this fight. Demetrius Andre, who's chomping at the bit to fight Canelo. Because I believe he sees what I see. Let me say I don't blame Canelo for wanting to become undisputed at 168, right? And I understand that Caleb Plant has a belt and that Canelo wants to fight him next. I, I can't begrudge a guy who wants to fight another champion in his next fight in his weight class, right? But just understand, Demetrius Andre saw this fight. He saw what I saw. The first round is mind-blowing because for some reason, Billy Joe Saunders comes out and allows a pocket to form. Why would you? He's not moving. He's standing right in front of Canelo. Now, maybe this worked for Floyd Mayweather, right? But understand, here... You know, Canelo's much further into his career. I thought Saunders should have leveraged his advantages. I still believe Saunders had a distinct advantage with his legs. You didn't get a chance to see that in the first three rounds of this fight because Saunders, who I still think, wins the first round. Right? I thought Saunders clearly wins the first round, the fourth round. I think an argument can be made that he wins the third round. Right, But even with the success Saunders is having, why would you stand in front of Saul Alvarez? I don't understand. This wasn't the Ray Leonard Duran second fight. This was the first fight when Ray Leonard stood in front of Duran and lost, got roughed up. So then you had Canelo not even having to run to find Saunders. Saunders is at his front door. A pocket has been established. Saunders isn't moving, forcing Canelo to move to try to establish a pocket. Saunders is right in front of him. So then Canelo does something great. Canelo starts countering Saunders to the body. If you look at the film, it's interesting. You know, Canelo basically lets Saunders throw some punches, right? Canelo leverages his lower height. You're not going to get to Canelo's body, right? Canelo has his hands up. As Saunders throws punches on Canelo and Canelo moves his head and block shots, Canelo then is throwing withering shots to Saunders' body. Now here's another mind-blowing thing that shocked me. Tell me if you agree in the comment section of this video. I believe that Canelo's best punch is his left hook. So, someone here in the comment section explained to me why Saunders, and I know Canelo's right-handed, but just like Floyd Mayweather's best punch is his left hook, 
Just like Caleb Plant's best punch is his left hook. Just like righty Roy Jones's best punch was his left hook. Canelo's best punch is his left hook. So why is Saunders going toward Canelo's left side? Quite frankly, I'd rather take my chances with Canelo's right hand than his left hook. His left hook is sudden. You don't see it coming. Go back and look at the ending of the Kovalev fight. It's the left hook that causes Kovalev to pretty much be finished. That's when Canelo comes over the top with the right hand. Now here, it's a bad dynamic because Saunders, by allowing a pocket to be formed, isn't hiding his body for counters. So you'll notice Canelo is throwing hard left hooks to the body. They're hitting Saunders around the kidney area. You'll also notice something else. One of these fighters did watch the rematch of Ray Leonard against Roberto Duran because the styles are similar, right? Duran didn't move as well as Ray Leonard, right? Leonard was the boxer. Duran was the slugger, right? Duran, very skilled inside, highly technical, just like Canelo. Well, understand, in that fight, because Duran liked to crouch over the pocket, right? Duran was a guy who didn't lean back. He leaned forward. Ray Leonard is throwing uppercuts in that fight. You could tell that Ray Leonard practiced the uppercut for the rematch. Well, here, believe it or not, Billy Joe Saunders is leaning over the pocket. And guess who's throwing uppercuts? It's Saul Alvarez. So Alvarez understood, okay, look, hitting a guy in the head is hard early. So I'm going to take away this guy's body. And Canelo is advanced enough where he's doing it on counters. He's letting the fight, and keep in mind, it's a fight of him against the mover. He's letting <laughs> he's letting the mover come to him. The mover standing right in front of him at the beginning of the fight. A pocket is formed. The mover's throwing punches up top. Canelo is waiting for the punch. He's moving his head. Then he's going to the body. Let me point out that by the time the second or third round starts, I believe it's Sergio Mora on the telecast, tells you that Canelo is trying to land a counter uppercut. Right, you actually see Canelo going low and throwing uppercuts that narrowly miss Saunders. It's so obvious on the telecast they're telling you he's throwing an uppercut. On the telecast, they tell you another thing, and it should be an eye-opener, and they're accurate on it, right? They, they said that a lot of guys fighting Canelo in the ring become afraid to throw their best punches because of Canelo's countering ability, right? Canelo takes your best tools away from you. Now, you see the first round, and you're saying, oh, Saunders, who is a jabber, is having success with the jab, right? He's fighting a guy who's excellent deep in the pocket, who's very heavy-handed. Canelo's a very hard puncher. So you would think Saunders, a southpaw, would try to keep the jab in Canelo's face the entire fight. Right? I'm positive that's what Demetrius Andre would do. Right? Number one, you don't want a pocket to form. In other words, you want to move like Ray Leonard did against Roberto Duran. You want to be far enough away where 
Ray Leonard in that fight actually starts shuffling and Duran's not close enough to him. Check out round seven of that fight to hit him. You want to be so far away that a murderous body puncher, whether it's Duran or Canelo, can't get to your body. You have the better legs. You need to emphasize spacing. You need to emphasize movement. So let's get back to that Ray Leonard fight. You'll notice Ray Leonard steers at Duran at one point, right? Just bends at the waist and looks at him. In other words, Leonard's far enough away where he can bend over and his body is safe. Well, what I don't understand with this fight, and it was a stunner, is that Billy Joe Saunders is bending in the pocket. So Canelo's throwing shots and Saunders is bending underneath the shots in the pocket. Number one, why give away your height? Number two, you're facing a counter puncher. The guy is countering you to the body as it is. When you duck under punches and your head is there in the pocket, your shorter opponent who's already throwing low punches to hit you in the body and who's already trying to catch you with an uppercut has opportunities, doesn't he? So let's just say I couldn't understand what Saunders was doing. Before the fight, Saunders talked about how he was going to decide on a strategy in the moment. He didn't want to prepare too much beforehand because if he got into the fight and realized that he couldn't use some of his tools, that would throw him off. Right? Saunders is a guy who likes to enter the fight, see what you have and then tailor his strategy on the fly. That was a mistake here. Right? Let me say this too. Canelo hit Saunders in the body a few times. Now keep in mind, I thought Saunders was winning the fight at the time of the stoppage. So I'm not here to say Saunders didn't put up a spirited performance. Quite frankly, this was the best performance against Canelo going back several years. It's a spirited performance, but let's just say the fight was on the table. If Saunders just corrects a few things, this is a different boxing match entirely. So Saunders is around the pocket so much Canelo's able to go flat-footed on punches. Canelo's not forced to lift up his feet, which would drop his power to try to run over to Saunders. Think Ali Liston, right? Ali's moving. Liston's losing power because Liston has to move to get close enough to throw punches on Ali. Liston can't even land his jab on Ali. That's the fight I wanted. Instead, I got Billy Joe Saunders, master boxer playing Russian roulette against one of the hardest punchers in the sport, pound for pound. So, Billy makes another mistake. After you see the jab, get Billy round one. At least provide problems for Canelo. Right? Create some kind of spacing for Canelo. Billy, after several shots in the body, decides not to throw the jab. I would have rather Billy say, you know what, my body's getting hit here. Let me get out of the pocket and let me continue to throw the jab. Let me get out of the pocket, let me move. Right, rather than me to make a decision to cover my body, to block future body shots, to emphasize defense of my torso at the expense of throwing jabs. If I were Billy, I would have thrown the jabs. 
and protected my body by moving out of the pocket. Let me say this too. I know three minutes is a long time. Right? I understand, you know, Roberto Duran gets inside on Ray Leonard in the rematch. Right? Canelo's going to have his opportunities. But I believe the more mobile fighter has to say to himself that at least half of each round, 90 seconds of each three-minute period, he's going to keep a pocket from forming. He's going to force Canelo to come find him. He's going to stick and move. He's going to force Canelo to have to get through his jab to get to him. Billy Joe abandoned the jab in this fight. Worse yet, Billy Joe is hanging around the pocket. I thought that was a problem. Let's talk about the last sequence. Right? Billy Joe does it wrong. Folks, when you throw a punch, and we're talking about experienced KG fighters, when you throw a punch, you want to throw the punch in such a way that you're not there to be countered. So if Canelo's in front of you and you are a southpaw, right, you don't want to throw a right hand that if Canelo makes you miss, which is what he did, that's the secret to the KO. Saunders throws the right hand, Canelo leans back, the right hand swings by him. Guess where Saunders is? He's still in the pocket. Only now, he's naked. He's thrown the right hand. He has nothing protecting his right side. So, of course, Canelo comes in with a wicked uppercut that hits the eye, right? Let's hope Saunders' career can continue. Understand, Manny Pacquiao broke Antonio Margarito's orbital bone. Margarito had problems with the eye after that, right? You might remember his rematch against Miguel Cotto where they kept looking at his eye. Understand, Kel Brook got his orbital bone fractured, right? I believe it's the uh, Golovkin fight, then the Errol Spence fight, right? He gets hit on that eye in the Terrence Crawford fight. Wasn't the same afterwards, right? Let's hope Billy Joe's eye recovers. What I would have preferred Billy Joe do, you're a southpaw. Throw your left hand. Have it take you out of the picture. In other words, throw a big left hand, then continue moving that way. So you're no longer in front of Canelo. So he's not able to have his feet planted to load up on a home run shot. In a fight, at least Chris Mannix on the zone had you winning up until the last punch. Understand they went to Roy Jones at the end of this fight. They asked Roy to discuss the fight and Roy basically said, look, you know, I thought Billy Joe Saunders was gaining rhythm. You know, was in the fight doing well. And then he got caught. Right, I'll go one step further because I know Sergio Mora on the telecast was saying, well, this was a tide and, you know, uh, Billy Joe Saunders was, you know, fading and stuff like that. I don't buy that at all. Understand, the person who has faded in some fights has been Canelo. Right? Look at his fight against El Perro, Alfredo Angulo. Look at his fight against... Kovalev, where Canelo has to take a round off later in the fight. Understand, Canelo's the one digging deep, throwing the bigger punches. Right? Saunders is the lighter person on his feet who should have been peppering Canelo with movement and jabs. 
right? I thought it was unfortunate. I thought Saunders was around the pocket way too much with Canelo. I thought Saunders didn't do enough to protect his volume, excuse me, protect his body by using his legs for defense, right? He should have been moving. When he threw big punches, they should have been, from a southpaw, big left hands that would take him out of the pocket. He should have been keying on Canelo's left hook. He shouldn't have been leaning over the pocket enough for Eddie Reynoso between rounds to remind Canelo to throw the uppercut. I thought the spacing was off for Billy Joe Saunders. I thought Canelo lost at least four rounds in this fight. Right? Let me also point to a problem that I have here. And don't get me wrong, I made money on the fight. Right? Just look at my pre-fight video, the hedge I'm proposing, uh, I proposed. I don't know how you get to the judges' scorecards. How could there be such a wide variance between Chris Mannix's scorecard and two of the three judges' scorecards? Everyone on the zone live was telling you this was a competitive fight. Quite frankly, this was one of the better fights that Canelo has had. Right? This fight is going to really raise Canelo's reputation. And it's very high right now. Right? But how could Billy Joe Saunders fight a guy who's shorter, who doesn't move as well, and not pump a jab and force him to move out of the pocket? How was Canelo allowed to plant his feet and to throw such heavy shots Repeatedly, folks, he's trying desperately to throw power shots to Saunders' body. Right? Why is Saunders ducking down instead of moving away? Right? So, let me just say, the Caleb Plant fight is going to be interesting. Right? Plant has an excellent left hook, just like Canelo does. I question Plant's right hand. But let's just say I'll be extremely disappointed if that fight takes place and Caleb Plant decides to stay in the pocket against Canelo as much as Billy Joe Saunders did. Right? The tragedy of this fight is that Saunders was around the pocket way more than he should have been. And yet, even then, was in the match and it was competitive. Right? It was unfortunate. Let me say this too. And I don't say it lightly. I was talking in the pre-fight video about how Saunders had to look at how Ray... Leonard carried himself in that Duran rematch and had to showboat a little bit to let the crowd know, hey, I'm here against your guy and he can't box with me. Right? He had to let the judges in on the fact that he was too elusive for Canelo, that Canelo was missing punches. Right? He had to channel those parts of Ray Leonard. And I pointed out that when Ray Leonard did it in round seven of that Duran rematch, the broadcaster Howard Cosell was not thrilled because it did border on tastelessness. Duran was a legend then. Right? The feeling was, hey, don't taunt another sportsman. But I thought that Billy Joe needed to because he's fighting a guy who is a fan favorite and a judge favorite. He's fighting a huge brand here. 
He needed to puncture that brand. He couldn't look deferential. Well, someone did channel Ray Leonard. What I want you to do is to look at round 14 of Ray Leonard against Thomas the Hitman Hearns. Right? Ray's first fight against Hearns. By the way, Ray Leonard, in interviews years ago, used to call that his best moment in the ring. Well, Ray Leonard hits Hearns. And keep in mind, that fight was close like this fight should have been close. Right? Again, I don't know what fight the judges were watching here. I believe Tommy's ahead of Ray Leonard in that fight. Ray Leonard hits Hearns, who staggers away. So what does Ray do? Exactly what Canelo does. After he lands that shot to Billy Joe's eye. Right? Canelo raises both hands like this. This is in the middle of the round. Raises both hands like this. The crowd knows their guy thinks he has it. If the judges missed the punch, they certainly knew that Canelo thought he landed something big because he raises his hand just like Ray Leonard. In other words, the fighter who should have been channeling Ray Leonard wasn't. The favorite was. Right? So you know the rest. After Canelo lands that shot, you notice that there's blood gathering by the eye. Right? Billy Joe did the right thing by not coming out for the next round. Right? Let's remember, Calvin Brock lost an eye against Vladimir Klitschko. I believe Klitschko has another opponent, Lehman Brewster who's blind in one eye, right? This is a tough sport. When you're fighting, you have to think about the rest of your life. Saunders is a young man at 31 years old. If he felt that something broke, keep in mind, Canelo thought he had broken Saunders' cheekbone. As I make this video, I'm not sure what Saunders' medical condition is. But Saunders made the right decision by ending the fight at that moment. What I want people to consider, and I know the official scorecards are what they are, which is a tragedy, which is both a travesty and a tragedy. Because I thought Saunders was winning this fight. And keep in mind, too, the worst case scenario for me would have been Canelo by decision or Canelo in the last round and a half of this fight. Right, so even as this fight was creeping into the later rounds, I was riveted because I thought this was the toughest opponent for Canelo in the last several years. He's certainly putting on the toughest performance. And I thought there was so much more he could have done. This fight hung into the balance until that last punch. Again, Chris Mannix had Billy Joe winning the fight until that last round. Let me also point out, too, that the scoring so ridiculous here that had Billy Joe continued, he would have had no shot of winning the fight. Well, almost no shot. Two of the judges had him losing by four rounds at the time of the stoppage. Right, Billy Joe would have needed a knockout to win the fight. Right, the scoring in Canelo fights really needs to be looked at closely. Opponents need to assume in Canelo fights that they're entering the ring with a two-round disadvantage. Let me also say, too, I thought it was striking. Mannix was the person who interviewed Canelo after the fight. And understand that Mannix is interviewing a guy who he thought was losing the fight until the last round. So Mannix asked the question, you know, did you feel that you were losing some of the rounds? And Canelo at 30 wasn't able to say that he was, right? 
Ray Leonard lost, in my opinion, the rematch against Thomas Hearns years later. I remember that post-fight interview. They call that fight a draw, which was ridiculous. And Ray, of course, pretended that the fight was a draw. It wasn't until years later that Ray admitted that, in his own mind, he lost that fight. It would have been nice for Canelo, even if he thought that the fight was close, but he was slightly ahead. It would have been great for Canelo to say, yeah, you know, the guy did rough me up a bit. It was rough and tumble. I did think it was close. But at 30, Canelo wasn't ready to say that, right? A few years from now, let's track the Canelo interviews. I think Canelo knows that he was at risk in this fight. There's a moment in this fight where Saunders hits Canelo in the body, then comes up and hits Canelo in the face. And Canelo was defenseless, right? Had Saunders then stepped in with a big left hand, Canelo may have been dropped. So put me among those who applaud Canelo. He is a great fighter. This is a Hall of Famer on a major rip in his career where he's decided he's going to unify the 168-pound weight class. I thought it was striking. As part of his ring walk, they actually had on the scoreboard, you know, something like the quest to unify the 168-pound division, right? This is a future Hall of Famer doing great stuff. I thought the pre-fight introduction from Michael Buffer couldn't have been more hyped, where Buffer named some of the divisions, where Canelo had won the championship and then pointed out that Canelo here was going for unification at 168 pounds, right? Canelo special. I'm not here to say otherwise. But there's an opening for a Southpaw mover. Let's be real here. This is the biggest challenge Canelo has faced in several fights. Don't you notice a trend here? Right? Arislandi Lara gave Canelo one of the toughest fights of his career. Mayweather beats Canelo. Mayweather is one of the more mobile guys Canelo's fought. Now you have Billy Joe Saunders. Right? According to Chris Mannix. Winning the fight going into the last round. Roy Jones thought Billy Joe Saunders had gotten into a rhythm, right? And this was in a fight where Billy Joe is doing a lot wrong, right? Moving into Canelo's left hand. So close to Canelo that he's getting hit in the body. And Canelo isn't moving that well in this fight. It's not like Canelo's dancing and darting. No. You know, ducking under Canelo's punches. So, the last punch... Where's Saunders' head, folks? It's right in the middle of the pocket. Right in the middle of the pocket. In a fight where Canelo's loading up, he's already going to the body, he's already trying uppercuts, he's already throwing hard punches in exactly that range. So good fight. I know, I know, I know. Many in the public disagree with me. I thought this was a serious test of Canelo. I thought Billy Joe left this on the table. Right? Let me just say, too, had Billy Joe not gotten hit with that shot, you would have had several rounds left in the fight. Right? Several rounds left in the fight. And... Canelo was having problems. Even if the judges, given the scorecards, would have awarded the fight to Canelo, there could have been controversy if the championship rounds went like the 5th, 6th, and 7th rounds went in this fight. That's the fight I saw let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section. 
of this video, let me just point out too. That movement would have forced Canelo to lead. Not just counter with the body shots. Right? Billy Joe allowed Canelo to thrive while countering. That should never have happened. Imagine Ali fighting Joe Fraser without active use of his jab. Simply astonishing. Finally, let me close with this. After the fight, they were talking about another fight between Canelo and Golovkin. Now, Golovkin looks like a faded fighter these days to me. I'll agree, I have yet to see Canelo beat Golovkin. Personal opinion. But style-wise, you have another slick southpaw out there. Folks, we know that's what poses the biggest challenge to Canelo. Demetrius Andre, right? Okay, if Canelo wants to fight Khaled Plant next, I have no objection, right? If Canelo wants to continue what he's doing, which is to fight tough opponents out there, right? That's what he's been doing. Golovkin, Danny Jacobs, uh, Kovalev, right? If he wants to continue that, if he wants to dare the fans, to consider him to be one of the best ever, then if Canelo unifies the title against Khaled Plant, who is a mover, who might be a southpaw in real life, but who fights orthodox, that's going to be a tough fight for Canelo. Right? And I guarantee you, Khaled Plant's not going to linger around the pocket like Billy Joe. Then I believe his fight after that should be Demetrius Andre. I personally feel that's a tougher fight style-wise than Golovkin. Right? Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.